You think God calls us to bring a bride to Christ and then say, Ooh, I forgot to give you the power of the Holy Spirit. No, he doesn't. God's given us gifts, not toys. Gifts. Each one of us has gifts. We're to be using those gifts to fulfill the Great Commission. Matthew 28, or 28, 19 through 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of time. Amen. There are so many people that are wasting their gifts and getting so little in return. I look back over my life and it just makes me very sad. Because I was called as a young man. I fought and I rebelled against God. I didn't want to do that. I didn't understand it and I wasn't going to. And it, well, the 44 years was cleaned me up. And it took that long for him to get through to me that there was a call on my life. I heard that call and I finally answered that call, praise God. The question is, have you heard that call in your life? What is it on your life? Have you answered that call? Lastly, we want to enlist our friends. Genesis 24, 49 says, And now if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me that I may turn to my right hand or to my left. Eleazar knew that this wasn't a one-man show. When people are prosperous, they have learned to be dependent on the people around them also. So are you a cooperative person? Have you learned to get a delegate? I once heard Lloyd uh, Carr, Coach Carr from the University of Michigan, spoke on this subject, and I also had the privilege of playing for him and under him. And I will tell you, he wasn't the greatest football coach in the history of football. But what made him so great, and he admitted it, was his ability to surround himself with great talent. As a head coach, he had some of the best defensive and offensive coordinators. It's the, the key to success when you surround yourself with people that know what they're doing. In a spiritual sense, I always say, you got to let God find your call for you. Go to where God is working. Surround yourself with the men and women that uh, you want to work with and grow with spiritually. And then step back and watch God's power at work. That's part of that prayer, uh, teams. Can you see how God's doing it already here? He wants to explode for us. We see this process when we see Abraham and Isaac and Eleazar. Matter of fact, this week we had snowflakes. Quite a few of them do. But you know, they're all different. But you gather all those up, you know, that has the power to shut down an airport, shut down a town. There's a lot of power in those snowflakes that we got to see. Over the years, I've learned a few principles in life. One principle is that when God calls you to a task, it will always be bigger than you. But he will also bring people around you to accomplish that task. We must never forget that. When we die, we are going to leave all this behind. But let me assure you of something. You're going to take everything that you are within you with you. That's the time you're going to find out, was I prosperous? The crown of jewels. One thing I know is once you're saved, you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and the plan of God uh, plan of God's salvation. You're richer beyond your beliefs that moment in time. How many don't act like it? A lot of people don't, don't even look like they get it. God blessed us some 2,000 years ago by sending His Son. As Jesus said, I came from heaven. He came to this earth to die for our sins, to do the will of the Father. He shed His blood at Calvary. It is in His blood that you are saved. You are under His blood. You must be covered by the blood of Jesus to enter heaven. It's just that simple. Accept the plan of salvation, be covered by the blood of Jesus, or reject the plan of salvation, see how that works out for you in eternity. Your soul will live longer than your body. Once you die, your soul will either go to be with Jesus, or it will await the great white throne judgment of God. And you will suffer the judgment of God and be condemned to hell. It's just that simple. Accept and repent of your sins of disbelief. Turn away from that head knowledge and turn to Jesus and accept Him in the heart. In conclusions, do you have the desire to have a prosperous year? I hope so. You want God's blessings on your life in every area? You want to turn problems into prosperity? 
You need to establish that plan for the cause, know your conditions, gain that confidence, strengthen that character, and enlist your friends. And let me tell you something, with the power of prayer, you got, you, you got it. It all starts with the condition of the heart towards salvation. Once you have that, then you put that plan into effect. You want to be prosperous? God wants you to be prosperous. And by the way, for Isaac and Rebecca, in Genesis 24, 67, it says, And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. I would say he was prosperous. It can be a new day. It can be a new time. It can be a new year. Let's do it for the glory of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this message. You want us to prosper. You want us to draw closer to you in prayer. You want us to be the servants to you. That we can worship you and honor you and glorify you with our lives. We need you in our life. We need you to guide us and direct us and protect us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us serve you in ways that will be staggering to this world. Thank you for this message and how we can do it. It's a simple plan, but it is your plan. And, and many times you just break it down for us so that we know it is simple for us. Will we do it? Will we humble ourselves before you and accomplish it? I pray this message has penetrated the hearts and minds of each and every person here. And as we give you all the praise, we ask all of this in Jesus' name.